Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. There are few people who are not in some way inspired by the sheer size and complexity of aircraft carriers. These mighty giants of the ocean cost at least $13 billion to construct and represent the pinnacle of military force projection. But what does it look like when one of these behemoths gets built? And what about its massive anchors and chains? During World War I, cruisers and battleships were turned into aircraft carriers and used to launch biplanes for reconnaissance. During World War II, Purpose-built aircraft carriers were crucial in naval warfare. Carrier battles between Japan and the U.S. were vital to the war in the Pacific, especially as shown at the Battle of Midway. With the help of a 965-ton crane, Newport News Shipbuilding has moved a step closer to completing the next Gerald R. Ford class carrier, named the USS John F. Kennedy. A superlift is a massive prefabricated modular piece of a carrier moved into position during the construction of an aircraft carrier. Because of their size, carriers are built in modules called superlifts, and massive cranes are then used to place those modules, or superlifts, into their correct positions. To see how the USS John F. Kennedy will turn out, let's look at the building of the USS Gerald R. Ford, the first ship in its class. Building an aircraft carrier is almost like building with giant play blocks. These superlifts are just hundreds of tons in weight, and a super crane is required to pick them up and place them where the shipbuilders want them. As an example, the island of the USS Gerald R. Ford was constructed and moved into place on the deck as a superlift. Shipbuilding engineers ensure that the superlift is in the correct position and then connect it to the deck, other modules, or previously installed superlifts. The main mast of modern U.S. Navy aircraft carriers is one of the most essential superlift devices incorporated during carrier construction. Weighing over 750 tons and towering above the flight deck, incorporating it as a single pre-assembled piece both speeds up production and assures appropriate mounting and alignment of internal systems and antenna. To complete main mast superlift integration, the giant shipyard gantry crane slowly hoists the towering steel encasement upright from its horizontal staging, rotates perpendicular while avoiding obstacles like cranes and other structures, and then delicately lowers it to seat into the foundation already set within the top of the island. No ship would be complete without its anchor system. Installing the massive anchors and anchor chains on an aircraft carrier condenses a complex, heavy lift process and necessitates cautious planning and coordination. Each massive forged steel anchor weighs more than 30 tons and is supported by even larger anchor chains up to 1,500 feet long. 
totaling more than 165 tons. Installing the anchor chain is easy in principle. A Haas line is attached to the anchor chain end and then pulled into the forecastle using the windlass and wildcat. When the whole line has been pulled in, the anchor chain is installed and the rope is removed. After this evolution, the system is tested and declared ready. Installation of heavy components does not end there. Nimitz-class aircraft carriers have two massive rudders that need replacing, usually during repair or refueling in complex overhauls. RCOH. A dry dock is prepared to lower the 49-ton rudder, which is then positioned in its final location on the dry dock surface. After that, a rudder stock that is roughly 27 feet long and weighs 20 tons is lowered into and through multiple latches on the aircraft carrier hull to start the process of raising the rudder into its final position. For the final part, a smaller crane that stands in the dry dock is used. Once the rudder has been positioned, it is attached to the ship. When the aircraft carrier has been completed, it has to undergo sea trials. A call to quarters is initiated which means all personnel have to man the rails of the carrier when, at first, she sets sail. Manning the rails is a naval tradition enacted when entering and exiting ports of call. Its practical application was to have the crew observe for underwater obstacles or landward hostilities. As the carrier sets sail for the first time, the crew knows they are part of the beginning of something new and probably remember this day. The vessel is also escorted out of the port by the tugboats of the port or harbor. But at some point, the carrier must return to the dry dock for repairs, or RCOH. One of the main reasons a dry dock is used is to remove the anchor from an aircraft carrier. Anchor chains may need to be repaired or replaced. The anchor chain evolution is a coordinated event between the deck crew engineers and a host of other personnel. At first, the anchor is lowered down slowly using the windlass in the forecastle. Once the anchor is on the ground, it is laid down flat. A crane lifts it onto a trailer and tractor and it is removed. Once the anchor is removed, the deck crew starts spooling out the anchor, which is dismantled into smaller sections. These sections are then more manageable to handle as part of the process. There is also another way of removing the anchor. An anchor handling pontoon is brought up to the hull of the aircraft carrier. The anchor is then lowered onto the pontoon by the deck crew and is removed. With the anchor on the pontoon, it is maneuvered to the dockside, lifted onto a vehicle by crane, and taken to repair and later to painting facilities.
In September 2019, an anchor was removed from the USS George Washington and needed repairs. It was, however, suggested that the anchor of the decommissioned USS Enterprise be repurposed. This anchor needed fewer repairs and was repurposed and painted to be fitted to the USS George Washington. Not only was the anchor replacement done cheaper, but the decommissioned USS Enterprise was remembered in the process. Pulling a new anchor into the hoss hole of an aircraft carrier is also called onboarding of an anchor. Anchors that have been repaired or are being replaced are brought aboard using a hoss or mooring rope, as explained earlier. Hoss holes are the openings through which the anchor passes from the forecastle into the sea so that a ship can be anchored. It is through this hole that the new anchor and chain are pulled. Once the anchor is in position, the windlass, which raises and lowers the anchor, is secured using a large steel pin. Without the pin, the anchor could cause the windlass to fail due to constant tension. Whenever the decision is made to raise or lower the anchor, a series of events is started in the forecastle to get the evolution completed. When the anchor is lowered, the safety pin is removed and it is lowered to the depth determined by the bridge. Colored links on the chain are used to help the crew determine what length of the chain has already been lowered. When dropping, weighing, or repositioning the ship's anchors, the senior anchor person, generally a chief or first person petty officer, oversees guiding the anchor details. When an anchor must be raised, the windlass is engaged and it hoists the anchor and chain back up to the ship. As the anchor chain passes through the hoss pipe, it must be sprayed clean with fresh water to remove debris and prevent corrosion. The same applies to hoss ropes pulled aboard. They are either dried or washed with fresh water to remove corrosive seawater. In ports of call or home ports, aircraft carriers are moored to the port side by means of heavy hoss lines. After the command and ship's whistle indicate that the carrier is to cast off, the hoss lines are untied from the dockside. These lines are four to six inches in diameter and must be pulled or heaved into the ship. The process is exhausting because the hoss lines are 400 to 600 feet long. They are made of long-lasting synthetic fibers such as nylon and are sized to securely support the tonnage of ships such as aircraft carriers against lateral stresses. Once heaved aboard, the Haas lines are stored in dedicated lockers or storage spaces on board the vessel's forecastle. Once the lines have been secured, the end of the evolution is reported to the officer of the deck, OOD, stationed on the bridge.
Building aircraft carriers is something the U.S. has a lot of experience with, having built more than 12 of them. Once composite structures have been built for the new carrier, they are attached to the hull as superlifts. Superlifts make carrier building less complicated, but these structures are heavy. Then, when the carriers need repairs, dry docks play an essential role. They are especially useful for anchor installation or rudder repair and replacement. Anchors can not only be repaired, but can be taken from decommissioned vessels. Except for the anchors and chains, aircraft carriers also have Haas lines. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.